Welcome to Murfreesboro Storyteller. Today we're located at the headquarters of Read to Succeed, and we have Jolene Radnati, who is Executive Director of Read to Succeed, as our guest. Jolene, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hood. I'm glad to be here. Oh, it's wonderful. This, the work you folks do is just tremendous. I was going to say, we, you are located in the building now with the Murfreesboro Housing Authority. Yes, sir. We're on the back side. So our mailing address or low, you know, our physical address is 415 uh, North, Maple North Maple Street. So we're on the back side of the Housing Authority, this, which it makes us more accessible to the families. Oh, absolutely. A much better location mm -hmm. for you. This building has a, a long history. Of course, I know it first as a the location of Central High School many years ago when I was a student at Critchlow Grammar School when it burned. Okay. It later was the headquarters for Middle Tennessee Electric Membership Corporation, and now here it is the Murfreesboro Housing Authority. So it's had a long life of serving the community and still doing a wonderful job. How long have you folks been located in this building? We, Read to Succeed has been here just at two years. Okay, and so. you've been director? For a year and a half. Okay. Jolene, read to succeed. The, the very title itself suggests what you may be doing, but give us a little bit more detail of just what read to succeed is. Read to succeed is a nonprofit, and mm. what we do is promote literacy and improve lives through literacy in Rutherford County, and we do that for free. Um, we have family literacy events uh, through family literacy. We work with the pre-K program with Mid Cumberland Head Start. Um, we also have family literacy nights that we do at elementary schools up to middle schools. And then we have a new program called Adolescent Literacy. We call it Adlit. And we have, we have discovered that in middle and high school, it's a, it's a reading desert. Mm. Because, you know, in elementary school, it's read, read, read. It's being with Dr. Seuss and the whole thing. But when they hit high school, middle school and high school, they don't read. So, you know, they Very really true. aren't, and it's required mm -hmm. reading, so mm -hmm. kids lose that love of reading. So we have chosen uh, books through Project Lit. Um, Diane Hall, our, our family literacy coordinator, is a um, wonderful asset mm -hmm. to us. She came from city schools. She, she learned about Project Lit, went to all the programming. She is a Project Lit um, chapter person, and so she brought that to us. And we are providing books for middle schoolers and high schoolers that these books are relative. Reading Anne of Green Gables or Little House on the Prairie, kids are not gonna wanna read that. They're not gonna be interested in it. They can't relate to that. So okay. we have that new program okay. called Dad Lit, and it's bringing books in the hands, hearts, and minds of kids. And the discussions are happening. And we use, utilize um, community members to read those books and have those discussions with the high schooler and middle schoolers. And then we also have adult literacy. So we, we do the whole family, not just the whole child, but the whole family. Um, so we have adult one-on-one, -on -one, adult basic English. Okay. We help those to get wherever, those folks get to wherever they need to be for their literacy goals. It could be a high school diploma, which used to be called GED, it's called high set. We help them get their high school diploma. We, we partner with adult ed, Rutherford County adult ed, get them through their testing. Um, we also can help folks with citizenship so uh, adult basic English, not only one-on-one, -on -one, but we could also do one-on-one -on -one with our folks that have learned English as a second language and help them get their citizenship. And we also have ESL classes. So those are throughout the county. And um, those are actually four or five, maybe sometimes 10 in a class, but we teach English as a second language. Now, John, the coolest thing is, is we have a small staff. We're small but mighty. Mm -hmm. uh, we are one full-time person, which is myself, and then we have six part-time individuals. And you do all that with that, that amount of staff? Uh, you know what it is? It's amazing volunteers, folks that oh, feel yes. led in their heart to help with any of our programs. Mm -hmm. They go through trainings to become tutors, or they're taught how to... Um, use the strategies to teach at the family literacy nights or any of our family mm -hmm. literacy programs. They volunteer, they tutor, and they give back to the community. And they end up falling in love with their learners. So, And then community partners. So without the volunteers and community partners, uh, we just gave away a little gift to some of our volunteers and it says, um, the other night, it says, your excellence is our success. So without our volunteers, we couldn't get done what we get done because we have an amazing community. If someone would like to volunteer, what should they do? How should, how should they get in touch with you? Well, they can <clears throat> call our offices, which are the number 615-738-7323. They can go online to our website, which is 
www.readtosucceed.org. There's a volunteer uh, tab. They click on that, fill in their information. It'll go to us, and we'll, we'll get right back in touch with them. Or they could stop by and see us. We'd love to meet okay. them, and then um, we could set them up for trainings or just see where they w would like to, you know, family literacy or adult literacy, how, how they would like to help. So you're working with all ages, I guess, is yes. what you're saying. Yes. Children, uh, adults, yes. older, older folks. Uh, older folks. I, I mean, we, we don't discriminate in age because sometimes you might be 75 and you want to be able to read your scripture and you're struggling. Well, we could help you get there. And we have had a gentleman that that was his goal is to improve his structure, you know, reading mm -hmm. his scripture. Um, but folks have the misconception that we tutor children. That is a goal of mine, but we don't do that as of yet. We tutor oh, adults. Oh, will be. Well. Hopefully. Yes, that's, that's in my um, strategic plan for in a few years if we can get to that, that far. But what we're doing now with the, the youth and, you know, the, the families, are, are, mm -hmm. It's great, but to add that new component, we're working on it and looking at some, doing some maybe some writing camps or something like that to okay. just continue those touches, especially with the kids, because the more that they are shown and modeled w the importance of literacy, that will change their trajectory. And we have to help those parents so they can change, you know, change the trajectory for their children. Approximately how many people are you serving at any one time? Have any idea? Well, um, it depends on on the, the month, but like we, the back here is our third quarter, and we helped 291 families. We had 886 children. We're at 11 ESL sites. We gave away 2,789 books, and uh, volunteer hours were 2,561. And that's our that is our third quarter, which is actually our slowest quarter. Is that right? Yes, because you know January, February, March. Schools are getting ready for testing, mm -hmm. so we don't have as many programs with the school system okay. at that time. But um, annually, you know, we have 12,500 for volunteer hours on average in a year. And so families were helping probably, we touch lives on family literacy events, over nine, 900 families each, each year, just families. And individuals were helping over 800, 900 family, individuals. And much of what you do is actually done in schools, right? Uh, well, the family literacy side is done in okay, schools. Right. So get, we have the, the, like I said, the pre-K program, which mm -hmm. is Mid Cumberland Head Start. So those are with all the pre-Ks, Smyrna, Maney Avenue, and then some of the um, classes that are with Murfreesboro City Schools. And then we do um, the family literacy nights, which are at all the schools that, okay. you know, so they might do a... K and one, K one, or uh, second grade and third grade family literacy nights. Like you know, we do David Urey. We do stuff with ESL families with city schools. It's just whatever school and when we book it. But those typically, a family literacy night is there's a book that's chosen, and we partner with MTSU Master Students or Lipscomb. Those those teachers come up with a strategy, uh, a learning strategy with the book that's chosen. Say it's like V for Volunteer. Michael Shoulders came out to um, David Urey and those teachers did strategies with the parents. So those children go home with that brand new book and then they also get a gently used book. So we help mm. get books to build their home library and any of their siblings get books as well. And then from there they get a, a family meal. So they're eating together. Just the importance of family being together, learning literacy together, promoting literacy together. So those are the kind of um, things we do throughout the school. And then again, the book clubs with the um, middle and high schoolers. And there's just not enough of families being together, doing anything, having a meal or whatever. Right, it, you know, the family unit is changing. And part of it is, John, a lot of our families, they're just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it, you know, it's not in their gambit to have, sit down exactly five o'clock, have dinner, sure. and then read. But the more that, that we can model that for them and partner with our school systems to help, you know, show okay. them the importance of that family dinner, family game time, family reading. The more we can show that importance of, of the family unit, that helps a family succeed and helps those kids succeed. I find that families too often now are sitting around with their cell phones. 
<laughs> not even talking. Yes, sometimes. that is the saddest thing. When I ask kids, well, are you read? Well, I'm reading on my cell phone. No, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, that is reading, but we want kids to sure. read and adults as well, 20 minutes every day and not from a cell phone. You know, the paper, what have you, 20 minutes every day is an important, and, and it really will get the kids to where they need to be if they read every day. Not schoolwork, but something they're interested sure. in. And I wonder how many families even subscribe to a newspaper anymore. When I walk, I don't see newspapers in the mornings. I don't see newspapers in the driveways like I used to. No, you know, uh, <clears throat> real, realistically, even reading, and we made it easier, you know, there's books on tape, which are great if, you know, yeah. if you're driving, you still get that, yeah. you know, but we want families to read and no newspapers or they're doing it digitally, which I love technology, but we can't have that written word. Like I have a college student, she packed her trunk to go to school and I thought, man, your clothes are heavy. She said, no, mom, those are my books. And Wonderful. I said, well, you yeah, you're not going to read. It's your freshman year. You're not going to have time, yeah, you know, but busy, huh? she said, I want to feel the book in my hand. So there are some people that are like that, but some people want digital. As long as they're reading, I, I really just, you know, even graphic novels, people think comic books, graphic novels. Mm. We don't care. We just want the kids to read and we want the adults to read. It, you know, by kindergarten, they want a 5,000 word vocabulary. You can't get that from being on a cell phone. Oh, yes. Huh. And you have to interject and you have to have, and you lose social skills. And you, you know, through literacy, you learn so much and you could go so far, you know, without even leaving your chair. So even the newspaper, you could be in wherever there's a conflict without leaving and you would know what's going on, sure. but you have to read to find out what's going on. Yeah, well, I like the newspaper in my hand. Mm -hmm. It's old fashioned, I guess. Tell me, what is the source of your books that you provide to the uh, your clients, I guess you should call them? The new books are, we, write grants, we take donations. Okay. Uh, coming up uh, right soon, since we're in September, um, November is our one and only fundraiser, and it's the Celebrity Spelling Bee. Okay. So we um, sometimes have to tackle folks and ask them to spell, because that's very, that's, you have to be brave to do that. I've been there. <laughs> yes, 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 that's correct, and you, yes. So um, we, we do a, one fundraiser a year and then donations and anyone that would like to um, um, help us have grant information with grants that we can write, but we write grants, we take donations, and we have that one fundraiser a year. The Celebrity Spelling Bee is a, is a great event. It's a fun event. Mm -hmm. um, it shows the fun, literacy's fun, mm -hmm. but you know, it is daunting to stand up in front of people and get a word that you're like, is that even a word? And you know, <laughs> but have to spell. I mean, kids can do it, and I know adults can do it, oh, but sure. you know, but yeah. it is, it's a fun event, and it just shows the fun of literacy, and we like to promote that, and uh, folks come out and support what we do, and some folks learn exactly what we do, you know. And that'll be in November? Yes. November 7th. Okay. It's coming up this month, uh, September 20th, we have the Reading in the Schools Day. Wonderful. I always so, enjoy doing that. That is a fun <clears> day, <throat> and the kids love it. The teachers love it. Um, it just It's a great way for, for folks in our community to show how much they care about the kids and how much they love reading. So that's coming up in the schools. Everything will be posted um, you know, through the schools of how you can sign up and volunteer to read because you know if you don't read you can't succeed absolutely <laughs> yeah, that that is a, a fun event to go and read to the students and be able to uh, have a book in your hand and show the illustrations and uh, try to dramatize it as much as you can yes and you know you ask questions you do voices i dress up as one of the characters always oh, wonderful. and i come in and the kids love it and, i'm sure uh, you know of course when you're driving to the school and you're not realizing what you're wearing that's you know People are looking at you funny, like, yeah. well, what are you wearing yeah. a crown for? But um, kids do love it. And um, it's important for them to see people outside of their house and outside of their school vested in them. Mm -hmm. And so the community has to pay, play a role to help with our literacy deficit. One out of six adults struggle at or below a third grade reading level. And that's so, a one out of six. One out of six. And that's across the United States, and that um, is from pro-literacy, that, that statistic. 72% of children of those one out of six are more likely to be at or below a third grade level. And, you know, um, absenteeism, behavior, it just, 
that lack of literacy starts triggers other things. Yeah, it's so important to everything about life, isn't it? It is. It's health literacy, financial mm -hmm. literacy. I mean, if you have a, uh, you know, directions from your doctor and you can't read, how do you know what to do? Good Just point. getting gas. You have to have, you know, a PhD to go through get, you know, the prompts for gas. <laughs> you know, so everything you do, if you think of it, from the time you wake up, you grab your phone. Mm -hmm. Your phone has prompts. I mean, everything you do, it encompasses reading. What is your typical adult that comes to you with a need? Is there a typical one? Uh, it really does vary. I could be honest that we have had people that have recently, not recently, but years ago, graduated college. And they've tested at like a fifth grade reading level. Seriously. And there are just things that they've figured out how to go on. Uh, but the average, I would say, are folks that their parents move so much. Mm -hmm. They were transient. They couldn't, they just struggled. So they ended up quitting school or what have you. Um, we have some folks that during, you know, they lived in an area where they had to quit school to help their parents with the farm. You know, some of our older folks, mm -hmm. they quit school to help their parents. They worked all their life. They've done construction and what have you, but um, they struggled to read. We had a gentleman um, went to a, retreat with his wife, with their church, and was tasked to write a love letter, and he struggled with that love letter. Oh and his pastor, and he'd raised his children and put them through college. His pastor sent him here. He was set with a tutor, and he's, he's writing love letters all day, I'm sure. Uh, he's improved his literacy, and Wonderful. that's just it. You know, sometimes, like with math, you don't use it, you lose it. True. And so if you, you know, if you don't read that often, you you do lose it. You really do. So um, sometimes it's just how life has happened and they didn't get the education they needed. Mm -hmm. So they want to come back to school because, you know, for jobs, you know, we can help people improve even if they're in a job and they can read and understand. We can help them with whatever they need, if it's math tutoring or whatever, to help, to help them get a better job. Because okay. the whole, our goal is to have well-rounded, citizens in our community with sustainable employment, mm -hmm. you know, and then thus they have food on the table, those, the children are fed, they can focus on learning and then that changes the whole cycle. I just can't imagine going through a day without having to read lots of things. I can't either. I, I mean, everything you do, driving, I, right. not being able to speak English and, and be in our country and drive. So with our ESL classes, the, our folks are saying how much easier it is for them to figure out how to get from point A to point B, and they're going through their citizenship test, and you know just what a uh, sense of you know accomplishment to to be able to do something you couldn't do in your daily life, but you have to have that courage, to take that step, give us the call, everything is confidential, and we'll set you up with the tutor, uh, put you in the ESL classes, and you know, get you to where you need to be. But it does take commitment. It, sure. It's not going to be overnight. You can't, you know, if you didn't know your, you know, subjects and nouns and verbs and, you know, what a consonant is, you, it's going to take a little time. So Tell us more about the ESL classes. Do you, are you confronted with a lot of different languages in our, among us? Yes. Currently, I, there's 48 different countries we've we're dealing with, but we have 26 different languages and everybody is afraid to tutor ESL because they think they have to speak a foreign language. The and only, you don't? no, the only language you need is English. Oh. That's the only language we train how to do the lesson plans. We train how uh, we provide the materials, everything we provide for our, our learners and tutors are for free. Um, we mm. want to make it no barriers so, so you can get to where, you know, you need to be. So. Everything is, um, we, we train, we have tutor trainings. We have almost every month we have tutor trainings and we help them get where they need to be. Sure. As far as the ESL, again, you have individuals that you work with or groups of uh, individuals? ESL classes are, we have sites, we have 11 sites. When okay. I started, they had five and we knew that there was such a deficit, the, the, the growth in North Rutherford. So we've added sites. So we're now at 11 sites. Um, and we are doing Smyrna and Laverne. Okay. Those folks, um, any of our classes, 
we could have five, two people, three people, up to probably ten. Once we get that big, we try to add another class okay, if, if sure. we have volunteers available to do so. Um, but if there's somebody working for their citizenship or they're just struggling and can't, the classroom setting mm -hmm. isn't working, we will do one-on-one. -on -one. We will set them up with a one-on-one -on -one tutor. But typically, they're in a classroom setting. Tell us about your funding. You mentioned the fundraiser in November. You have so other sources of funding for Reef to Succeed? So, again, grant writing. So yeah, okay. we, we do the, the grants. Um, it just depends. Bonnaroo has had a grant. We're trying for that. But there's so many different grants oh to Lord. write for. And um, also mm -hmm. the private donors. Um, we... We have a mailing, we do our annual report, okay. and just folks that have learned what we do, believe in what we do, they'll send in um, donations. So donations, private donations, um, and then the grants, and then the celebrity spelling bee. That's the only way we fund. And we're good stewards of the money. We really, you know, we want to get those materials and the books in the hands, hearts, and minds of kids. What is your budget for a year? So right now we're at, 230,000 just around there okay so and so we have we do the staff we pay our rent here we buy all the materials for all the classes we buy the books for the adlet we flip papers over cut them up and use them for scrap <laughs> if you know we are trying we are good stewards of the money because we want the monies to go to the to the folks for reading now you have classroom space here at your location on North Maple Street do you not yes um, actually uh, the Housing Authority is amazing. They have been so generous for us to utilize like the, the Maple Room, which is a great space if we want to do trainings or have an event. Um, we do tutoring back here. We have sections off for tutoring here. We have use of the boardroom. So yes, yeah, so we have tutoring going on here. And then the, the amazing um, Rutherford County Library System, they you know allow us to have tutoring at, at their any other library. So typically our one-on-one, -on -one, if it's not here, we want that done in a, a public place. We don't sure. want them at somebody's house. So oh, it's yeah, usually absolutely. library or here is where we have people meet. Jolene, tell us about your one book project. Uh, that is a, a, a neat pro program. So this has been going on for several years. Folks in the community, they become part of the, the committee, mm -hmm. and they read. And several of them are from Line Ball Library, but we read so many books, and we choose a book that we feel would be one book worthy, that would speak to a majority of the folks. We promote the book. Um, all of the one book committee folks promote it. We promote it. We announce it at the Celebrity Spelling Bee okay. in November. We'll announce the book that starts the following year. Um, and when we do that book... We promote it. We, prom we have book crossings. We have them at, um, at all the libraries, okay. Adams Place. Uh, we have them at local like coffee shops, like Just Love Coffee. And the books are in book boxes, and we, prom we provide those for free. So we ask a person to grab the book, read it, and then pass it on That's or wrong. bring it back. So we do that for several months, and we do promotions regarding the book. Um, the authors get excited. We've had an author come and speak. Uh, this, this, we haven't announced, of course, November. We'll announce sure. the new one. But for 2019, it is the one, the one book that we have is um, The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. Okay. He is an author. He lives in Nashville. He's actually a lawyer from Nashville. Mm -hmm. And it's a YA, a young adult book. But it really does speak. It spoke to me. It spoke to all the staff. And it's nods to everything here in Murfreesboro um, and, you know, in Middle Tennessee. Sure. So it has MTSU in it. It has Cookful in it. It has oh, different good. sites. Okay. And um, this year we did a fun event with that. And we did, we're doing a quest. And that quest is posted on our um which is now ending, but our quest is posted and it just has them go to the things that are mentioned in the book and they take a picture. Good. So <laughs> just read throughout the community and start a conversation regarding the book. If you had one need that you have more than anything else, uh, one desire or something to add to read to succeed, what would it be? Something that one need, well, always we need oh, money funding, to keep, sure. keep funding. However, I would say tutors. Um, Okay. That, that, or, or volunteers, that well, yeah. love of giving back to, is great, but life also happens. A lot of our volunteers, you know, they have 
elderly parents they have to take care of. They have kids that are traveling, you know, so we need sometimes subs, just people to volunteer to be a sub for our, um, you know, a, a adult literacy. Mm -hmm. But, and then family literacy needs people to help us prep for our events. So when we do stuff with the Mid-Cumberland Pre-K kids, um, it's a small book, but we do a craft with that book and we do the craft with all those kids. So getting that craft put together and ready to go, volunteers to do that kind of stuff or work the family literacy nights to come and help feed the kids and um, give out the books that we're donating to them as well. What would be the typical time that a volunteer would spend during a week? Is there a typical time? Well, you know, if you look at it, if they're a tutor and they tutor twice a week and the lesson plan, I would say six hours would be the max out of their time okay. and that's actually teaching and lesson plans okay and that's if they're meeting twice a week if they're meeting once a week it's three hours and then for family literacy um, I would say volunteer time monthly might be six hours monthly okay. so you have a board of directors I believe that you work yes, with right? we have a terrific board of directors yeah. I, I understand that you used to be on the board I, of I directors I served a term and enjoyed it very much yes well my um, my wonderful mentor, Lisa Mitchell, she had a great board before she had rolled yes. off. And then many of them were due to roll off this past December. And I, of course, mm. begged yeah. <laughs> for them to stay on one more year since I was just new. I just had, sure. I had just finished my first year. But three yes. Three-year terms, is that right? It's a three-year term, okay. yes. Um, but I do have two positions actually currently now. So I'm looking forward. But we have a great, uh, amazing board. And they're very Im involved in... Um, have great ideas and they support us in any way. Okay. As we speak, who is your current chair? Uh, Brian Coleman okay. with uh, Edward Jones. Know him well. Yes, okay. he's, a, he, he's a great when I have an idea or something I need to, you know, I'm like, what do you think? So mm -hmm. he's a really great, uh, the whole board is great. They, you know, if I need some help or we have an event, since we are a small staff, sure. sometimes we need help at events. So I'll holler at one of the board members and they'll show up and help us with our booth. Okay. Wonderful. And they all read at Reading the School's Day, so. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy doing that as well. If somebody wants to volunteer, now what do they do again? How do they get in touch with you? They can call our offices, they okay. can go online, or they could stop by here. All our information, even on Facebook, if they wanted mm -hmm. to go through Facebook or Twitter to contact us, we can take it from there. Give us that phone number again, and also your email address. 615-738-7323. And then um, our email is www.readtosucceed.org. Jolene, tremendous. Just congratulations, and we wish you well as you continue to serve this community. So you're serving the whole county, not just the city. Yes, of, right? if they live or work in Rutherford County, okay. we will help them. All right. Well, Jolene Radnati is the executive director of Read to Succeed, doing a tremendous job, located again in the building that houses the Murfreesboro Housing Authority on North Maple Street in Murfreesboro, right across the street from the Rutherford County Health Department. Yes, sir. Jolene, con congratulations. Wish you well in, in, in months and years to come. Well, thank you. And John, I hope you continue to read every day and stress that to everybody you know. Absolutely. Have to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.